uh, and thanks John Paul uh, for inviting me for this talk. Basically, uh, I am Amir Khalid. I am from Signify. Uh, it was known as Philips Lighting or Philips before. Uh, I'm a system architect in LiFi department or in, in our LiFi business. Uh, from and, I, and I'm from Netherlands as well. Uh, today, I, I'm going to explain some of the experiences we face uh, or challenges we face when we were developing our first uh, commercial Li-Fi product for indoor wireless uh, broadband communication. I will start with my talk uh, with some introduction that why we need Li-Fi or why we, we are thinking towards going towards a different spectrum for wireless communication. Then I will uh, give a glimpse of uh, ITUT G.VLC standard. Uh, then I will define our architecture approach that we use to develop our first product. Uh, then, I will, then, I will, then I will give some uh, results and analysis to, to see what are, the, uh, what are the real values in terms of SNR or in terms of some different variables we, we, we found. And then I will summarize. Then I, the floor is open for the question. So basically, uh, 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 why we need live fire? So, so this is one of the very common slide everybody wants to you know promote the technology so so i, I will also do the, the same increasing the amount of the bandwidth in a uh, lot of mobile traffic uh, like we are now using i'm using wi-fi i'm using i'm using i mean indoor so i'm also contributing some traffic so so basically these two uh, are the key contributor to increasing demand for, uh, uh, for for high bandwidth systems and also they are putting a lot of uh, uh, let's say load on onto the network, especially for Wi-Fi. Uh, so we need to think in different directions, especially to offload the wireless uh, wireless traffic, uh, the the Wi-Fi traffic, because Wi-Fi it has a limited uh, uh, let's say bandwidth, and also it does not perform good uh, in the in the congestion area when it is have a lot of congestion means a lot of users are active in, on, on the same network due to CSMCA. Uh, however, uh, so it means that we can think of another technology like uh, visible light communication or Li-Fi, uh, which, which is getting more popular and also getting commercialized by different companies. Also, our company also commercialize a product uh, that will really help to offload the traffic of Wi-Fi. Uh, since, since, since in the future, as Cisco forecast, as you, as you can see in the graph, in in next couple of years, couple of years, the traffic of mobile will only exceed to 60 to 80 terabyte, a hexabyte, sorry, per month, which is a huge amount of traffic. And then we need something to cope with this traffic as well. Uh, so so true. Uh, saying that, uh, what are the live? How we can implement Li-Fi? Suppose we say Li-Fi is a, is a technology, but how or what are the Standards uh, uh, that that a commercial company can think of by implement before implementing Li-Fi. So, 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 so one of the approved standards for Li-Fi uh, uh, or, or recommended standard for Li-Fi is from ITUT G dot VLC. It is also called G dot nine 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 one. It is recommended for high high speed indoor wireless channels. Uh, specific, especially especially it specifies system architect. It specifies physical layer file layer and data link layer both. Uh, uh, and then there, there are some flavors that it used because it is one of the subset or one of the reuse standard of G dot uh, uh, HN, which is a home networking standard used for uh, power line coaxial or phone line communication. So most of the file, uh, file layer and the data, data link layer are quite similar with the, with the uh, G dot HN standard. So, it helps the, uh, which helps the chipset manufacturer to really uh, copy or really replicate the, uh, the similar structure or similar architecture to implement G.9991 standard. Uh, so some, some key highlights of the, of the G.VS uh, uh, standard, it uses an OFTM quam modulation or let's say DMT, discrete multi-tool modulation, which is very well suited for channel like VLC. Uh, which require which has an LEDs uh, 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 bandwidth limited uh, transmitters. Uh, it used TDMA. Uh, uh, you, you can put your each user can be put on a on a typical TDMA grid, and uh, uh, it used bit loading, which is also one of the very important feature that that is required by the LED channel. 
and also some some uh, LDPC uh, fact coding. Uh, but also the good thing is it can be uh, upgraded to 200 megahertz, so you can use different flavors of uh, uh, you can Im implement different flavors of uh, bandwidths, uh, baseband bandwidth, like 50, 100, or 200 megahertz, depending on your, of course, requirement. And then here you can see that some 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 copied uh, G dot HN uh, uh, values, for example, uh, for example, for power line, you need typical amount of subcarriers like 2048 to 4096 to really uh, really uh, select your channels. Uh, uh, to mitigate the path law, uh, multi path loss, uh, then you have phone line and then for quacks. I, and, and in our opinion, the quax channel is mostly where where the link is, where the channel is not so much disturbed or not so much, uh, let's say, changing very rapidly, are much suited are much suited for Li-Fi communication. Okay, so uh, so these are some of the flavors of the, the the standard, and then I will I will go towards our architectural approach that how we, we implement our first call. So uh, suppose, uh, so this, this is our Li-Fi modem. Uh, our Li-Fi modem consists of uh, some, some interface conversion from Ethernet, from Ethernet uh, to uh, like with, with RGMI, RGMII can, uh, interface to a wireless baseband. Uh, G dot baseband, basically VLC baseband is a system on chip that implements the G dot VLC standard and give an analog output in the form of OFDM. And then, then we have a Li-Fi interface where we connect our uh, luminaires uh, to this, this baseband signal. Uh, then we, we implement an architecture in such a way that we can connect up to six luminaires uh, sending same data. So it's a kind of point to multi-point extension of uh, the system. Uh, the, LAP is basically Li-Fi access point, we call it. So this is a part of our luminar. You can easily plug into our luminar and, and which will start emitting the Li-Fi channel, uh, Li-Fi signal, uh, which, which has, which consists of a driver, TX driver or TX modulator and, uh, and infrared or visible LEDs. You can use either infrared or visible LEDs. And also it, it is a transceiver, which, re which is required uh, for, for the full duplex communication uh, or bidirectional communication, uh, a receiver, a photodiode, a transceiver and amplifier, and then coupling network to the baseband. And, and on the user side, uh, we call it Li-Fi access key. It, it is a, a USB dongle that is connected to the PCB, uh, to the PC, to the, to the computer uh, via USB interface that is recognized as a uh, as a communication device, Ethernet communication device, which consists of uh, same G dot H, uh, G dot VLC, AFE, and baseband that converts this Li-Fi signal light into uh, a G dot VLC based signal, and then apply to the PCB uh, after the uh, RGMI uh, or USB interface. And similarly, it, it it has a transmitter for the uplink. So we have a downlink transceiver and a USB dongle. That there and also the uplink transmitter and uh, in, in the USB dongle as well. So for our for our in our first product we use infrared LEDs because infrared LEDs are slightly better and you are you are uh, you are not dependent on the uh, light itself uh, and you can turn it on. Uh, so uh, even the light is off, even the visible light is off. The link is still working. Okay, so. Uh, I, here, here before uh, next, I would like to explain some some of the driving topology. That what are the important aspects of selecting the drivers when you are trying to modulate the LEDs. So after after some research, after some research and study, we we uh, basically tested two topologies. Uh, one topology that you directly modulate using a, a driver or an amplifier. Uh, an LED with a biased approach, where you, where you uh, capacitively couple your your Li-Fi signal, and then you just apply a bias to an inductor. In this approach, you you can basically modulate the LED with some bias, and and and, uh, and then you can control the bias, of course, with some biasing resistors here as well. Uh, uh, more mostly in the literature, if you see of the in the in the Li-Fi implementation literature. They used mostly uh, this kind of approach, but 
one mistake they do usually is they use a power amplifier with a 50 ohm output which is not suitable which, which is not suitable for this kind of uh, uh, approach because lifi imposes only one ohm impedance it's, it's a very heavy load or it's a very low impedance load if you apply a 50 ohm load and then to a one ohm load then there's a lot of reflection coming back and then can you destroy the amplifier uh, and we saw that when we tested both of this technology both, both, both of this the driver topologies uh, in this topology basically you are directly directly driving the the led with a serial transistor by applying the data in the base of the transistor so in the, the the difference between these two approach is biased approach performs slightly better because uh, because of the fact that uh, if you properly match the impedance here uh, with the led with, with the low impedance if you drive the uh, uh, the output of the driver with the low impedance with an led to the led uh, the the biased circuit basically improves the uh, fault time of the led because it pulls out the electron hole pair Uh, uh then hence the 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 how should i say the fault time of the led has been improved uh however with with this approach with with the serial transistor approach we saw that although we we, we get a quite uh, flat frequency response but the biasing of the led is has to be controlled uh if you are using uh one led two led or four led uh, to minimize the power losses so in our approach we 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 tend to propose to use a biased uh, because here you can independently drive your L, uh, signal with with the with the independent uh, biasing circuit and then some challenges so i would really like to highlight some challenges like led bandwidth so this is number one challenge that the 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 current uh, technology of the leds does not built for communication they are built for illumination if you talk about uh, visible leds or infrared led also for illumination but now now since the introduction of this uh, uh, not only lifi but also the face id detection time of flight higher leds are tends to perform better in terms of uh, response at, uh, rise time and fall time so hence improving the bandwidth uh, so just typical number if i say some typical number uh 10 to 12 megahertz for blue led uh, excluding the phosphorus component uh, and then 18 to 20 megahertz for the higher leds uh so 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 to compensate or to mitigate this bandwidth effect you need to implement some uh, some, some smart driving uh, topologies or some smart driving electronics so so that you can have uh, some some flat response of 50 or 100 megahertz or some residual response up to 100 megahertz uh, of course we we apply some uh, thanks to our uh, huge experience in the driving technology in in philip lighting uh, now signify we have quite expertise in uh, in in making our driver uh, very suitable to ir leds uh, how, uh, however uh, uh, one the next challenge is power consumption uh, the leds are really power hungry in term uh, because it requires some uh, dc to to be able to perform or to be able to uh, give a proper throughput uh, that can cover some some uh, distance and angle because here we are talking about uh, application of wide angle application something like this plus minus 35 to plus minus 40 degree which can cover an office office space or at least a cubicle room so led requires Uh, are quite power hungry so we face quite a challenge to really optimize our power consumption and we are still we are still trying to improve here by by different techniques secondly uh, thirdly sorry the the main challenge is bandwidth because the uh, once you transmit your modulated signal you need to receive it and then uh, a receiver a photodiode a photodiode also have an uh, a capacitance which is really limited In, uh, which is which is really limiting the the uh, response uh, because the capacitor is inversely proportional to the size of the ppd so if you need to have more uh, uh, sorry capacitor is directly proportional to the size of the pd if you need to have higher uh, area you need to have uh, you will have more capacitance that will reduce the bandwidth 
so uh, so at the same time you need basically more speed uh, and more coverage so, so so this will be really limitation so you need to optimize your receiver by using some post equalization or post processing uh, post uh, analog post processing techniques to improve your receiver or to mitigate or to remove the capacitance effect of your uh, in the photodiode uh, so this is also one of the challenge whenever somebody wants to build a Li-Fi receiver, you need to think in this direction as well. And last but not the least, the, the, the thermal management, because as I explained, uh, it is directly coupled with the power consumption. So if you have the LEDs uh, uh, for large coverage, especially uh, you need to pump some power from the LEDs and it, they produce quite a lot, uh, some heat. And then you need to manage those heat. Uh, so, so if you manage those heat with some, some thermal, uh, passive thermal management, then your size will increase, especially in the dongle side. So in, in the ceiling side, in the luminous side, you can still cope with it because you have space, you have power. So there uh, we, we, we still believe as a lighting company that we can, we can uh, be at that power consumption. Of course, we want to reduce there as well, but for the moment, for, uh, with the current technology, we can still live with that. But in the dongle, or, or, or because our our uh, our vision is to bring the dongle uh, into the laptop or into the smartphone. So if we want to integrate that dongle uh, into the laptop, we need to reduce the power consumption and the size. Otherwise, no laptop manufacturer will wants to put that big dongle uh, into the laptop. So this is also one of the key challenges we faced. Uh, in our uh, productization of our current product. Uh, next, I will I will explain some 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 numbers or some results. So in sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I'm here. I, I sorry to interrupt. Um, there are may, may several minutes left. Please okay. speed okay. need, need okay. up. Yes, thanks. Okay. So uh, just to give you some 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 numbers that uh, that uh, this is our coverage. So so at this point, suppose there are two transceiver out of six. Uh, uh, we are at uh, 2.4 meter distance, so we, we, we achieve 250 megabit per second bitrate if we are exactly in the center of the transceiver, uh, between two transceiver, and if we move from one transceiver to the other transceiver, our bitrate is basically reduced, of course, because of the, uh, because of the circular coverage, uh, uh, or, or, or I should say the Lambertian coverage, uh, and then, but, but since here the two signal overlap, uh, two, two signal overlaps and which contributes to the constructive interference and then you have some uh, bitrate uh, still available more than 150 megabit per second. So this is, uh, these two transceivers are spaced at 2.4 meter distance. So uh, so I would say similarly, you can place six transceiver in, in a big room and then you will achieve 30 meter squared coverage with only one modem. And then you can place 16 user in one modem to, to uh, Cover a whole room of 30 meters square. The, here you can see some some SNR a, a SNR uh, for for a single user uh, at the receiver uh, side at 2.4 meter receiver loss. So you can see that how the channel of the LED how the LED is behaving. So you have very high SNR uh, at some uh, few megahertz first few megahertz where the 3 dB 3 dB bandwidth of the LED lies and it drops to almost zero at 70 megahertz. So thanks to bit loading and OFDM, uh, it only use those SNR which are, which provide some uh, SNR values. Uh, sorry, it use only those subcarriers that have some SNR and discard those that does not have an SNR. And then this green, the, this black curve is basically the bit loading, how does it performs. Uh, I, we also also see that if you have a difference in path length, for example, if one of the, if one of these two uh, length of the cable uh, which is distributed to the luminaires is different. And then if you place one luminaire in, in between these two transceiver, then you will have uh, some, some dips in the SNR. Here you can see some dips in the SNR. But thanks to, again, OFDM, these dips, it means that just few carriers are off, but still the communication will, will go on. Compared to the non-return to zero, where, where you have this kind of interference, you will, uh, ignite the intersymbol interference, you, and then you need adaptive equalizer for that. And then just to give, uh, just to uh, let's say market my product, 
our product, we, we, our brand name is Flyfy. Uh, uh, we, we support Office Industrial 4.0 transport hospital application. Uh, we have these six, uh, uh, we are different, we have different products. For, for example, for Industrial 4.0, we have different product, which is point to point as uh, uh, Daniel was saying that we can really test this, this, uh, this, uh, our, this product for the industrial application. We support 250 megabit, and of course, if the bit rate is not uh, uh, really important, then we can increase the coverage and reduce the latency. Our latency, the numbers are not less than one millisecond. I would say around one millisecond, one 1.5 millisecond. Uh, and our coverage, uh, this is our current USB dongle, uh, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, but of course, we are working to reduce this this dongle to really uh, a small size be able to integrate, which is our future vision, uh, that we will integrate this dongle into the laptop. And we can transmit 250 megabit plus. And since this product is launched in a couple of years uh, ago, we have improved a lot our system and transceivers for our future integrations. Thank you.